Professor Jega has said that the current administration has performed below expectations of so many Nigerians, stating his worry about the direction the country is taking. He pointed out that governance has been very poor at the federal level at many of the states, and that is why there are issues of insurgency, banditry, armed robbery, and other things. Joining us today to have this conversation is public affairs analyst Babashola at Degui. And again, joining us uh, live via Zoom is uh, Alester Wilcox. He's a political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Now, I'll start with you, um, Babashola. Apparently, Professor Jega has not necessarily been heard for a long time right after. He's the uh, man who sat uh, over INEC while um, former President Goodluck Jonathan handed over to uh, President Buhari. Um, he states that a lot of things have happened below expectations, being that people had expectations, high hopes of Mr. President. Um, did you have any expectations of this government? Uh, were they high hopes and why? Um, thank you very much, uh, Mary Han. Professor Jaga actually stated the obvious, and uh, I'm very sure it's nothing that is hidden from everybody except those who are not ready to see and to state the truth. Many of us actually voted for Professor uh, President Buhari in 2015 for a lot of reasons. And for me personally, I actually supported him because of the insecurity in the country and being a former military head of state and uh, we also have the so history of how he was able to um, suppress uh, a, 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 an insurgent during a particular period. So we believe that being the president, he'll be able to control or put the insecurity under his feet. Then also, some of us believe that if President Buhari comes into power, then he would be able to uh, um, control or attack the people, um, uh, put in an effort in reducing corruption in Nigeria. Which is one of the things he campaigned on. Yes. Of course, he actually campaigned on. So some of us also believe that, okay, in being the president, of being a former military head of state, that there are some things that we're able to put into control, especially the economy aspect of it. But unfortunately, if we look at if you look at this, it's security in Nigeria now. The only thing you'll be hearing about this government talking about is during former president, the Boko Haram actually were in control of maybe 20 something local government, and now they are no longer in control of any local government. But the truth is, the insecurity between 2015 and now, you cannot compare the two of them. Why? Because it has already generated to something that even beyond the control of just the president or the, uh, the security men. Now it has to involve every one of us. We just, all of us have to take up our security issue as a serious one. What do I mean by this? Now, if you look at the number of uh, the Nigerian army officers being sent to Boko Haram to face uh, the Boko Haram, if you, if you look at the number of those that have been killed, if you look at the number of the policemen that has been killed or wasted away, and look at the number of the total officers we have in the Nigerian Army, Air Force, and Nigerian Navy. Definitely, you can't say the Nigerian Navy there, except they are in the Lake Shard. So if you look at the number, you discover that they are not enough to face these people. And looking at the insecurity across the nation, it is not only in Bono State now. We also got the, uh, the news of what happened in Zamfara, Castina, Kaduna, Abuja, Kaduna Express. We, we have the information. Look at the kidnapping going on in the south too. It's al almost everywhere. So you just discover that the, 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 the president or the people working with the president in respect of security are not doing enough. But is it is that the only thing that we can be uh, scoring the president on? I mean, there are other areas that uh, I know that insecurity is, uh, you know, an issue. But is that the only thing that we can score of the course. president on? Because recently the president had to speak up. Obviously, I'm guessing that he's gotten too many critiques, and and he did say that when judging him, people should be fair. Uh, you know, looking at what he's done, and he he pointed out a few things that he's done. Uh, he talked about, you know, uh, the economy. He talked about uh, education. He talked about some infrastructure. He even talked about the railway system. That 
I mean that if the elites, most importantly, are, are analyzing how, how well his administration has done, they should also consider other things and not just judge him by one thing. But Alastair Wilcox is joining us again. Um, Alastair, you obviously voted for President Buhari just as um, Baba, Baba Shala says he voted for the president, having very high hopes. Do you agree with Professor Jega that the presidency has disappointed a lot of people? Well, um, perception is like an elephant with blind men uh, trying to go and uh, identify what an elephant looks like. Um, I, have, I, I read that story in my primary school days where spirits blind men were, were asked to go and find out how an elephant looks like. So someone gets to the trunk, to the shoe, no, to the leg, held the leg, say an elephant looks like a trunk. One gets to the trunk, trunk of the elephant, say it looks like a horn. One gets to the body, say it looks like a wall. So it depends on the side you are, on where you touch, on where you are seen. Um, if they ask me to score the president, of course, certainly I'll score the president above, above 55. Above 55. If you ask some other person, they will score him 10, depending on where they are looking at. Yeah, the guy has his own right, has his right and opinions to express how he feels about the president because he's also human and he has expectations. I have strong expectations. I have expectations that have not all been met, but I've seen concerted efforts, concerted efforts never before in this country in terms of delivery of infrastructure, in terms of uh, credibility in governance, in terms of purposeful leadership, in terms of direction if a country should go. In this past five years plus, I've seen it. So I would not say it's a disappointment. If you ask me specifically, I will tell you the challenges he has, and I will tell you the strides that he has made. So when you weigh them on critical balancing, yes, one will say security, like my brother was talking about. Yes, we talk about security. But sometimes, too, some of these things we felt like people would report nobody can travel through Kaduna, Kanu, uh, Kaduna, Abuja Expressway. But every day, thousands of cars are passing through that road. Every day, thousands of cars are passing through that road. People say, oh, nobody can travel from here to Bini. But thousands and thousands of cars are passing there every day. So it depends on how you are reporting these, these things. And sometimes the press, too, the way they report, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm very unapologetic about my about the press. The way they, preserve, the way they present issues, sometimes they will blur the proportion. So I, I, will take, I will say I am not, it's not a disappointment to me and to so many people that believe in the president. Because if you look at what he has delivered with the circumstances and resources available to the country, then you need to give him some accolades. You might not, you might not give him a trophy, but you give him some accolades. Let's talk about the willingness of the president to listen to the plight of the people. Uh, according to Professor Jaga, he said that um, the, the direction that the president is taking the country to is not the direction that he, they expected him to take the country in. Um, they also said that he has enough time to turn around things, especially in terms of communication, uh, information, um, dissemination to the public that he hardly ever speaks to the people. Um, but then, of course, the president has many spokespersons, and we've seen, we've heard from Garba Shehu, we've heard from Femi Adeshino, he has um, the Honor Che woman, and, and several people putting out all kinds of statements. But other than that, let's talk about education, let's talk about the economy. He's saying that the president has done his best within the circumstances that he's found himself and, of course, the monies that are available. How well can we rate that? Well, um, on a particular item, I'm going to agree with my brother, and that is the respect of infrastructure. And infrastructure is not all about uh, everything, but I'm going to talk about transportation. When we look at the means of transportation in respect of the roads and railway. I will tell you the government has done something even better than the previous administrations. Even if you look at some of the airports too, the same thing. So apart from that, apart from that particular sector, transportation, aviation, area away and all those things, I don't see any where I can give my president a good, uh, what's it called, accolade. Borrowing and spending, um, we've, we've been borrowing so much so before, that- Before you can actually assess someone, you need to know where we were 
and where we are now. Okay. Yeah, if you cannot compare the two and give a, uh, a, a justification for, for the assessment, for me, it is nowhere. So if you look at what, 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 was the, what, was, what, was, what was the inflation rate that time, what is the inflation rate this time, what was the Naira value that time, what is the Naira value now, how many people were unemployed that time, how many people are unemployed now. Now at that time, the, when it came into power, and when it came into power, what was the income being generated? What is being generated now? What was the debt? What is the debt now? We need to look at those things. We need to be sure that we are actually giving a sure, uh, a, a good judgment in respect of assessment. So if I'm to look at everything, the government has done everything possible to generate revenue. Even up to now, we are talking about going to borrow money from the pension, they are talking about using the or the dividend. Talking data. about talking about easing the plight of the people, the government has come up with different schemes to um, bring, according to them, people out of poverty. Let's not forget about the first scheme that paid twenty thousand naira. Um, we also have a brand new scheme that was launched by the vice president last week, which would give the poorest of the poor five thousand naira each, and then they're working with NASCO to. Um, get the information of these people and give them 5,000 naira for six months. And after six months, they're hoping that these people will come out of poverty. Let's not also forget that we're still borrowing to spend. How does giving 5,000 naira, we also know that COVID, you know, has a role to play in all of this, but COVID just happened in 2020, but we've been running from 2015 into 2020. Um, how does borrowing and giving 5,000 naira to the poorest of the poor help us uh, generate income or change the face of our economy? Uh, I mean, really, we're borrowing and spending on the wrong things. Uh, correct me if I'm is wrong. That for me? Well, well, Alastair, you can help me answer this before he comes in. Sorry, is that, sorry, is that for me? Go ahead. Okay, because you've already, you've already laid down the cards on the ground. If, if you answer the question. Uh, number one, number one. Um, if I may come in, the government, the government have a lot of what they call SIP, social investment programs, and uh, that that is part of the cardinal objective of the government. I, I I don't work for government, so I'm only speaking from an analyst point of view. And those have its various components. Like you had the you had the the work the, the school to work program, uh, the one that uh, unemployed youths we are paid. Uh, I mean, graduates we are recruited for. I can't remember what it's called now. You have the traders money, you have the... The trader money the, is still the, on... The, 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 forest of the, the forest of the poor program did not start with this government. The forest of the poor program did not start with this government. It started with the previous government, so they only continue with it. Now, let me tell the you about The vice Boruhi. president just launched about... it last week, sir. No, no, it's a new one. But that has, it's a program that has been going on for long. You are a journalist, you should know this. I do, but, for long. But, you, but you're making it sound yes. like... Now, Go ahead. Now, 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 let me tell you borrowing and spending. What economic activity lives on spending? That is pure, that is simple economics. When there is a downfall, like we are in a recession now, the only way you can get us is to spend. So you must look for money to spend and reflect the economy. That is basic economics. Now, the borrowing the government, this government is doing, if you are following this sequentially, they are not borrowing for consumption. All the borrowing they have done is towards capital projects. They have never borrowed for salary. How are these? How are these people. capital projects going to? Borrowed. Hold on, they, hold yes, on, is hold on. To use, let, let, let Alastair, me finish, let me, let me I remember in twenty, if it's finish. not twenty nineteen, um, the World Bank, the IMF, had I asked our governments to try as much as possible to spend these monies in ways that they can be able to repay. Do not forget that Nigeria fell among the list of countries that were unable to pay back. Economies like Ethiopia and Kenya were able to pay back and they had already started seeing a change in the economy. But for Nigeria, we were spending those monies on projects that were not going to bring back some profit or make us money anytime soon to pay back our debts. I'm the guest. You are the moderator. Let me educate. Well, we're educating each other, so go ahead. No, no, let me say this. Let me say this. No, you are wrong. You are wrong. IMF still gives Nigeria a loan for infrastructure. I didn't say and they did not give us a loan, Alastair. We repay itself. The rail line will repay itself. The roads will, be, will repay itself. Those are what generate economic activity, not consumption. 
You don't borrow to consume and think you can pay back. You borrow to invest. So borrowing to invest is not a bad thing. So all the money borrows are for capital repayment programs. So let's get that clear. Let's not misinform the people. Okay. One last, one last question. Account, one last question, Alesta. I can take it those figures for free. I know. One last question. Uh, Atahiru Jega has said that the president has more time to redeem itself in terms of insurgency, insecurity, and other issues of ethnicity and religion. Um, do you think that the president is going to be spending the last days of his um, tenure to deal with these issues quickly? I don't know where Asu Rock is, so I wouldn't know what the president is thinking. I've not been to Asu Rock before, so I don't know what the president is thinking. But my prayer for the president and my advice for him is to speak out more to Nigerians and to make Nigerians know his direction rather than keeping quiet. So let him spend the remaining two and a half years or two years plus to speak more to people, to advertise his program more, and to make people understand where he's going. But all, right. all those criticisms for me. They are a flash in the pan. They don't hold water. All right, they are great. Just on, on necessary. Nobel laureate Wale Shoinka has spoken on this issue. We've had several um, other leaders of thought speak on this issue. And then Professor Jega is uh, some, somewhat buttressing the point. Do you see the presidency listening? Because he has said that he prays that the presidency listens to the cries of the people. Um, is that feasible because Nigerians flooded the streets October 20 and we remember what happened to the young people who were protesting. Is there room for the people to be heard and can that um, help the turnaround in this government? Will there be any such thing in the future? Well, the, go the, the government has about uh, two years, uh, four months to leave uh, office now. And I'm very sure the government has, for me, technically the government has only one year. Because any time from May 2022, politicking starts. So if the government has to do anything, then the government has only one year, four months, to do anything in respect of the, uh, the image of the government. Then let me just talk about the borrowing money or whatever. Just in for, one sentence. Yes. Whenever you are borrowing money, the government should always think of how to generate revenue for the, borrow, for the money being borrowed. If you look at the revenue we are generating in Nigeria, for me, it's not enough to pay those debts. And that is why we'll be having challenges with the economy in the next few years. So, taking for example, you borrow money. If you want to borrow money for construction of road, then there must be an avenue to generate. Maybe you have a toll gate, generate money, then to, to, to enable you to pay back for that period of time. So, let me just hold on there. All right, well, I want to thank everyone for being part of the conversation. Lester Wilcox is a public affairs analyst, and of course, uh, Baba Shola Adebri. Uh, is also a public service uh, uh, analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll find out what Nigerians have to say about the president's performance throughout this administration and going forward. And right after that, I'll give you my take. Uh, I think the man is not ready for government. And I, since he became our president, a lot of things have been going wrong. Might be bad luck or whatever it is. Uh, but personally, a president should be somebody who comes out to talk to the people. A president is somebody who comes out, they hear from you, you know, something like that. You carry the people along. You let them feel you. You feel them, they feel you. But since Buhari become our president, mm, Abbas and Joe used to have a media chat. When Jonathan came, Jonathan talked. But since Buhari come, he said I'm in style, and Baba goes slow. So we leave him. Uh, to be sincere, his, his regime is, is terrible. Mm, it's really bad. We expected more than what we are seeing. And the situation is so bad. It's as if they are confused. They don't know what to do anymore. You know, take for example, the Fulani Esme. It was, it didn't take uh, our president uh, a month to, to declare the iPod a uh, criminal organization, terrorist. But if you consider all the things that have been going on, what, all the crimes and atrocities the Fulani's have been committing, up to now, no one has been able to explain to us how they managed to, you know, secure for themselves ammunition. If I will rate it, it is not a good one. It is not an excellent one. It is a bad one. To say the fact, uh, it has not been easy. The man is not giving us what we want from him. Uh, the, the, the Nigerian, we voted for him. 
and uh, the expectation, the man could not be able to meet the expectation. Buari tenor is not okay. Both the first tenor and the second tenor is not okay. Zero. Majority of the citizen, the, 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 the situation is too, I can say, is too bad. Personally, I can say I'm not really enjoying the uh, Buari administration because things are very, very difficult. And uh, I pray with God, I think God will rectify everything. Here's my take. Now, what happens when an issue isn't addressed and it keeps brewing? It brews and then one day it gets out of hand. This issue of herders and farmers has been left unaddressed for so long. The government kept playing the ostrich, picking and choosing what to speak on and when to speak. Now we have a full-blown problem on our hands. Why are we a reactive country? Why do we let things deteriorate to the point where it's almost irredeemable? Now the IGP of police is calling for a stakeholder meeting. In other words, let's come to the table and talk. Now we want to attempt some form of damage control. Why did we wait for this long? I mean, some of the characteristics of good governance is dealing squarely and head on with all shades of insecurity and uprising before it gets worse, making sure that the people you are presiding over feel safe in their domain. Now, listening to the plight of your people and responding positively on time isn't a sign of weakness. It's called leadership. Now, all we can do is hope that our voices are heard and that this issue of insecurity is addressed. I'm Mariana Cohn, thanking you for watching. Do have a good evening.